Thanks for tuning in to the Drive On Podcast, where we talk about issues affecting veterans after they get out of the military. Before we get started, I'd like to ask a favor. If you haven't done so already, please rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts. If you've already done that, thank you. These ratings help the show get discovered so it can reach a wider audience. And while you're there, click the subscribe button so that you get notified of new episodes as soon as they come out. If you don't use Apple Podcasts, you can visit driveonpodcast.com forward slash subscribe to find other ways of subscribing, including our email list. I'm your host, Scott Deluzio, and now let's get on with the show. Hey, everybody. Today, my guest is Justin Gracieu. Uh, Justin uh, started the Oath to Country Foundation as a way to support veterans with their needs after returning home from overseas. Justin, it's uh, great to have you on the show. Welcome to the show. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your yourself and your background. Scott, thank you for having me. It is truly an honor and privilege to be on Drive On Podcast. Um, I, I do first want to get started by saying um, thank you. Um, you know, I want to give thanks and praise first and foremost to, to God for giving me this opportunity to speak before your community, um, our country, and the world. Uh, I do want to thank also my grandfather who honorably served in the United States Army and third, I'd like to thank Cliff from Decisive Aim for connecting me with you. This is truly something special. And it's, I already know walking away from this experience with you, Scott, my heart's already racing. I can, I can feel it. <laughs> um, I'm going to walk away from this experience. Um, it'll just be truly unforgettable. So I, I, I'm very excited to be here. I'm going to pour my heart and soul into this conversation with you. Um, I, I might even tear up. I, don't, I, I apologize ahead of time because. This is a, um, a, a very heavy, it, it, it's an honorable, there's so much to share with you and I, I, let's just get started. I want to get started. So let's go. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. So um, yeah, so you, you mentioned Cliff, uh, Cliff Payne back, it was uh, episode 87 uh, that we had uh, Cliff on and Cliff introduced you to me um, uh, ap shortly after we had uh, had done, completed his interview. And, uh, you know, he said, he told me uh, while we were talking like a little bit about your, your background and your story and said, you know, you need to talk to this guy and, and get him on, on the show because he, he's doing a lot of great things for veterans. And so I, I, I found out a little bit about you and what, what you're up to. So um, I, once I, I kind of read up a little bit about you, I, I was like, yeah, this, this is something I want to make happen. So let's, let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, your background and, and kind of how, uh, how you got into uh, what you're doing now. So before we get started, yeah, I know it's you and I on this podcast, but I do have a very special guest that I want to include in this conversation. And here he is. Oh, cool. Uh, is that your, uh, your grandfather that you mentioned? Yes, it is my cool. grandfather. And I'll tell you the story. Um, so Ota Country Foundation is a 501c3 dedicated towards working towards ending the war on veteran and first responder suicide and meeting the specialized needs of homeless veterans and their pets in Los Angeles and surrounding communities. Um, our mission is to foster community of connectivity and collaboration with partnerships and volunteers to educate on, advocate for, and strengthen veterans and first responders' mental health and to provide the resources for, for the ones that end up homeless or low income here in Southern California. Um, so that's our mission and our objective. I do want to give you a little bit of backstory on how this all started. Um, the nonprofit um, legally started March 9th, 2020. But in my heart, the nonprofit started in 1983, uh, the year my grandfather passed away. Okay. No, I, I founded the, the nonprofit in, to honor my grandfather's legacy of serving in the United States Army. Uh, my mom was 17 years old when she lost her father. And at the time of death, uh, records of his service were burned um, and scorched and erased from history. Um, in the 1973 St. Louis National Personnel um, Archive, in the Archive Center um, there in St. Louis, Missouri. And something of a bow in the ballpark, I think, 16 to 18 million veteran records were were were, were lost um, right. in, in this in this fiery event. Uh, so fast forward 
10 years in 1983, shortly after his passing, I mean, days after his passing, my mom and, and the sisters, um, there's, there's four sisters, by the way. So you can imagine they're pretty young. My mom was 17 at the time. And they went to go inquire about his, his, um, about his benefits and to see if they can have him rightfully buried and honored um, as a veteran in the, in the United States Army. And come to find out, um, there was no record of Corporal Joe Benny Montoya in, in, in the system. Um, you can imagine at that time, things were archived, paper, handwritten, you know, right. we don't have, you know, shared drives like we do now in an iCloud system where information is accurately um, stored and um, can easily be attained if, if ever requested. So at that time, um, time was ticking. They had to bury him. Um, so they buried him in a, in a private cemetery with no recognition. Um, so through the years, um, I've conducted, I've made it my life mission, even before I started the nonprofit, I wanted to get to know more about this, about this man that I call grandfather. And I wanted to understand where, what, what happened and what took place. And I, I wanted to know the, the emotions involved. So I started asking these, these questions to my mom and the sisters and, and, and relatives across the country. Who was he? What did he do? And, and how can I share that story? How can I save that story? Mm -hmm. And how can I share it with the world? So um, come to find out my grandfather forged his birth certificate at the age of 16 to enlist in World War II in 1945. And the thought that a six-year-old boy, a boy at 16, could could come to that conclusion and commit his life in, 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 in service to, to our country. I'll never understand that. I'll, I'll never, nobody knows why he did what he did, but I, I found out he was, um, there were things going on in his life, in his life at that time. And it, you know, that serving our country and enlisting in the United States Army was his calling. So right. I, I felt, I felt, I felt very, um, I felt compelled to, to get to know more about him and come to find out there are so many other brave men who, whose stories were erased too. And I, I can't imagine what the families that are out there that are still fighting today to get the recognition for their loved one. Right. And, and that's, that's not an uncommon story either uh, where there are um, uh, kids, like you said, boys who uh, there's stories of people in the civil war who, who were just kids at the time, uh, uh, world war one, world war two. And it was a lot easier to, kind of forge those records back then than it is now you know nothing was digitized and you don't have uh databases of information that you can rely on you just look at the piece of paper in front of you and if it says that the person's 18 well then we're just going to assume that that person's 18 and we're going to we're going to go with that so there are there are definitely stories going back uh years and years and years talking about how how people would kind of fake their age to to sign up uh, to, yeah. to fight in the war. And, you know, their reasons vary, you know, some of them, they, they think that they're old enough, you know, like we all did at 16, we thought we were invincible and we could, we could do anything. And we wanted to prove that we we're a man or, you know, whatever it was, um, you know, th there's, there's so many different reasons and I, I wouldn't claim to know what any of them are, uh, for, for any, uh, one individual, but, um, you know, there, there's tons of those stories out there, uh, that, that are, are similar to that. And it, like you said, it, it's mind boggling to me that, that kids would, would just volunteer to go, um, to war, uh, you know, to do some of the atrocious things that even grown men, uh, have trouble wrapping their head around. And, and these, these kids go out and they, they're doing some of the same stuff. So it's, you know, amazing that people like your, your grandfather, um, was willing to do that. Um, and it's also a shame that, you know, some of these records that were not digitized uh, service records and stuff that there really what only was one copy and they were stored in one building. And when that building goes up in flames, they're gone. 
Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's very unfortunate, but you know what we have, um, there, there, there is information that I found throughout the years, um, especially um, months leading to the effective date of the nonprofit Ote Country Foundation. Um, my mom uh, called me uh, November to October 2019, and she said, "She said, Jr. I have I have a folder I'd like to give you." And inside that folder was several photos, uh, service photos of my grandfather, the very few that we have, and. Along with that was, you know, driver's license and several other personal documents, but there was also very little information about his uh, service. Um, and what I did with that information was, so if we look at the, uh, the, the list of the unfortunate events of these you know, fiery situations, if you will, um, that moment that my mom gave me that folder was the fire that was ignited within me to start this nonprofit organization. And that fire was lit so fast. The next day, Scott, I have to tell you, I reached out to the VA, phone calls, faxes, uh, emails. I was so relentless in my effort to tell them, this is who I am. This is who he is. And we need closure. Mm -hmm. I want closure and I will not stop until I receive that closure. So uh, my family, December, Christmas day, my family delivered a, a small box. And in that box was a bronze veteran medallion uh, sent, to, sent to me by the, by the Veterans Administration um, to rightfully recognize my grandfather um, and his 14 years of forgotten service. And I, I wept, I cried before my family because that was the best Christmas gift that I've ever received. And boy, will that go down in history for me. So <laughs> I, do, I do wanna circle back to, to the, the conversation um, that we, the question that you had was in my heart, this organization started 38 years ago at the past, with the passing of my grandfather. So every step and breath every action, success and failure, every heartbreak, I was led to this mission. And to think that even before I was alive, I was working towards it. And, and I feel so connected to this, um, that I, this is, this is, this is the mission that God has me on and, and I'm going forward and I will not stop until my body cannot move. Uh, and, 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 and I think it's important that we continue to pass that message along to our, to, to the community that we live in um, and, and across the country and, 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 and overseas, because we want to pass that torch uh, as well and ignite the fire in, in, in our friends and our families and our supporters and volunteers, everybody, so that they, so that they too can feel and come forward and say, you know what, my grandfather, my brother, my sister, my my aunt, uncle, they served. Mm -hmm. Let me let me share their story too. And and that's what's so that's the beautiful part about this is come forward and, and share your story. Tell us about your history or the history of someone that you know, because there are so many stories of valor, uh, honor, service, sacrifice that are oftentimes forgotten, Scott. And it's really unfortunate because I, I've talked to a couple of friends. Yeah, uh, asking about their history, uh, their family's history in, in the service or, or, you know, serving, you know, in law enforcement, fire, and, and oftentimes the, the, the stories are not passed through the generations. So we're seeing, you know, that it, the, the stories are not documented and, and I, you know, and I encourage my, my friends and families and, and those that come out to to, to do that research, to start asking and opening the dialogue within their own families. Right. Who are they and what did they do? Come forward and tell us who they are so we can recognize them, so we can honor them, so we can cherish that memory and never forget their name. Absolutely. And that's something that um, I know my myself and my, my uh, family history, my grandfather served in the Navy, World War II, and I don't know very much about his service. Um, you know, we do have his, uh, you know, service paperwork. Um, so I, I know, you know, uh, you know, honor, 
on or about, you know, the dates that he, he served and, you know, the ship that he served on and, and that, that type of stuff. But it, you know, as a lot of guys in that generation, they didn't really talk much about that, that type of stuff. And so the stories, you know, it, the stuff on a piece of paper is, is great. You know, it's, it's good factual uh, demographic kind of information, but you know, it, it doesn't talk about the, the people that, that he knew and the, the things that he saw or the things that he did or any of that stuff. It doesn't talk about any of that stuff. So I like, there's a big gaping hole in that family history of stuff that, that took place. And it's interesting too. Um, and, and I'm sure that's the same, same way, uh, you know, in your family and, uh, you know, countless other families that, that had, um, people serve and they just don't know these things about them, their, their, their family members. So, um, you're right. Absolutely. I, I think you should definitely tell, tell the stories, um, whether it's sitting down and talking with people, uh, putting a video camera in front of your face and starting to record it. You know, now that we have this kind of technology, um, the episode that uh, is coming out the week before uh, this episode. Um, so it should already be out uh, by the, by the time this episode comes out. Um, I talked to a, a, a guy who is um, uh, recording videos of uh, uh, family members, friends, neighbors, coworkers, things like that of fallen service members. Um, and to tell the stories of those people, because who, who better to, to tell those stories than the people who knew them, uh, you know, knew them, right. Knew them best. So, um, I think this is kind of a great segue from that, that previous conversation into, into, uh, you know, kind of real world, like, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't that be great if you can go back all those years and sit your grandfather down and have him tell his story and, and either write it out or record it, uh, you know, on either audio or video or whatever, um, you know, the, the technology was back then, wouldn't it be great to have that story and, and be able to hear it from his, his own, his own lips, you know, coming out of his, his mouth. Um, that, that to me would be amazing. I know, uh, myself, um, uh, my, my brother was killed in Afghanistan and I, I wish I knew more about his, his story from his point of view. Um, you know, I've gotten to know a lot of the people that he served with and got to talk with a lot of them. Um, and it's great to hear some of the, the funny stories, you know, he was a goofball. So there's plenty of funny stories that, that, uh, people, people tell us about, uh, about him and, uh, but it would be great to have had more, uh, you know, from, from him. So, um, you know, it's, it's really something would be something special. And I think it's something that a lot of uh, veterans should consider is sitting down and either writing down some of the stories or uh, recording them on video or audio or what, whatever the case may be, tell your story. And that way your kids, your, your grandkids, your, you know, other generations aren't going to sit there scratching their head and wonder of, you know, what are some of the things that, that grandpa did, you know, back in the war or whatever. So. Mm -hmm. uh, can I ask you a, a quick question? Uh, yeah. What is, what is, and I'm, and I'm sorry for your loss. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your brother's full name? So I can honor his name before our next um, suicide awareness run. What is his name? Yeah, absolutely. His, uh, his, uh, he was a Sergeant in the army. He's uh, Sergeant Stephen uh, Deluzio. So, I give you my word. Um, before the next uh, suicide awareness run, we will honor his name and share yeah, it absolutely. on the along the California coast. So that that would be awesome. A, I give you my word. Yeah, it, and as far as as far as I'm concerned, as far as that that goes, it's it's one of those things where like as long as his name keeps his name and his story keeps being told, um, then he's not truly gone. You know. Yeah. Yes, I know physically. You know, he he's he's gone, you know, it's not like I can call him up on the phone and talk to him, but you know, as long as people keep remembering and saying his name and telling his story, then, then he's not truly gone for good. So, um, so that I, I definitely appreciate that. I, 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 um, I appreciate you reaching out to do that. So, um, mm -hmm. Let's, let's talk a little bit about, so the, the foundation now you, you said it started about a, a year ago now. Um, and, the, the Oath to Country Foundation. Um, what is it that, that you're doing with this, uh, this organization and how is it helping veterans? Okay, so we, uh, we as a community, because this, this organization is not, not just me, um, there are veterans 
uh, spouses, um, their kids. Our, we have law enforcement, firefighters, healthcare workers. We have um, people from all walks of life that come together. Um, in the middle, I'd say about the middle of COVID-19 in 2020, um, I set out on November 22nd, 2020, Actually, I'm sorry, that was the second run. Um, August 8th, 2020, I, I ran, I set out um, on foot to run for this mission. And actually this was really the first event for Oath to Country. And I, I, I ran 22 miles um, for 22 veterans who take their lives a day by way of suicide uh, with 22 pounds on the 22nd day. And I summoned, um, well, I, 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 I didn't know, I didn't know what was really going on. I just, I prayed and, and I, I, I poured my heart and soul that, you know, people would see the message during one of the, one of America's toughest times, uh, you know, facing a pandemic, uh, there were real issues going on. And in, in terms of mental health and, and let's, let's look at it on a, on a deeper level, anxiety, depression, social isolation there were real issues going on and i felt that the, the message of mental health was not um was not being um t discussed uh, there was I, I felt that it was it was very pushed you know into the into the corner you know of, of a room and there was real no dialogue going on so i said you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna do this i'm gonna get out there and i'm gonna run along the california coast people might not see me a lot of people might see me i didn't know what was going on i just said let's go my friends my parents um there was probably a small group of us maybe eight eight of us i said guys just come follow me we're going to be in los angeles along the along the california coast and we are uh, and we were out there i was running with the flag i i had my good friend um Jerry Merritt, um, who is a California state leader for Mission 22, he was behind me on bike, and he was my 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 um, my inspiration to keep moving every step and every pedal of, of this of this mission. And uh, shortly after that, we had another run, uh, November 22nd, 2020. Same thing, 22 miles for 22 veterans with 22 pounds on the 22nd day. Um, so the message got out after the first run and we said, you know what, let's, let's include everybody. Let's bring our families forward. You have a name that you want to share, you want to honor, bring them forward. You have some heart, passion, love for our service members, bring, come forward. March, run, ruck, walk, bike, row all, alongside us. Wherever you are, you unite with us for, for a day. Um, and shortly after that, just two weekends ago, um, actually, that would have been February 20th, uh, we had our, our third annual run. And, and I felt, I, I know there's something that God has his hands in this mission because the word is out and people are uniting. We have, we have people from all around the country. We even had um, several uh, supporters um, in Europe unite with us on on february 20th in honor of of our uh, of our, our veterans and first responders and raising the public awareness for um for uh, mental health and, and and not being afraid to to open that conversation to, to to break those stigmas that say you know we we can't talk about it because it's dangerous i, I understand the dangers of mental health but we need to talk about it so we can find the solutions to help those that are that are suffering in silence today. We have people that are coming out um, that that are looking forward to these events because it is mental health for them, because it's 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 something to work towards. We have I have family and friends, uh, people that are are training weeks or months in advance now for these events. So the what I'm seeing is this relationship between uh, physical health and mental health. Because now people are finding solace and peace and, and, and therapy in, in training for these events. So we have that impact now where we can say, hey, uh, this is what we are doing. People are, are, are feeling better about themselves and, and 
every, and, and it's really something special to see them co come, in, come out for a day and pour their heart and soul, blood, sweat, and tears for a day to unite um, together as, as a band of brothers and sisters for this cause. Yeah. So, so you, you bring these people out and, uh, and, and you're doing the, these, these events. Um, is there, is there an outreach, uh, type of program to, uh, to raise awareness for these events and to get more, more people coming to them? Um, you know, what, what is, what is that looking like? Yeah. So, so the social impact program that we're running, which consists of uh, the 22 mile, um, the 22 mile challenge and what we're going to get into in a second here with our homeless vets and pets campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find this information on Instagram, um, Oath to Country Foundation, as well as Facebook. Um, and uh, that's where you can find us because I, I am active. I, I manage this. I manage these platforms daily and I, I do my best to respond to everybody, every question, um, because I'm, I, I feel that it, it adds a great deal of, um, added value when you're reaching out to people who ask very specific questions about, Hey, um, how can I be involved? What can I do to help? Um, I have a name that I'd like for you to honor at the next run. So it's very, it's very personal for a lot of people. Um, and, um, and we want to continue to, to share that message and, and you can find it online. Cool. Yeah. Um, and, and you, you mentioned the, uh, the homeless uh, outreach program um, that, that you have too. Um, what uh, would you talk a little bit about that? Yes. Okay. So I am very excited to share this with you. And, but first I have to give you a little bit of the backstory. December 19th, 2020 days before Christmas, my friend calls me. He says, Justin, I, I am here curbside with a homeless veteran and, and he has a dog, he needs help, can you come? And without, without question, any further question, I said, absolutely. So I'm walking to my car, my neighbor stops me. This is early in the morning. He goes, where are you going, kid? And I said, I'm, I'm, driving, I'm driving out to, uh, to Arcadia, which is about a 30, 40 minute drive from, um, my place of residence. And um, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm driving right now. I'm going to head out to, to see a homeless veteran and uh, to see what his needs are. I, I'm going to help him out. I, I hear he, he needs some resources. So I'm going to go and, and give him what he needs. And he said, he pulls out his wallet and says, here's an extra $20. Um, buy, buy some food for, or buy some extra snacks for, for this gentleman. And my neighbor, his father, uh, grandfather served in the uh, United States Navy. So uh, he had a very personal connection to this too. He didn't like hearing that there's homeless veterans and I, right. he likes to hear that. It's, 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 a, it's very unfortunate that we have them sleeping on our sidewalks um, uh, with no home. Uh, so, so I, I arrived to the scene, I get there. It's a, it's a pretty beat up truck and um, no veteran to be found. So I'm looking around, you know, the, the location and there's a reservoir nearby. We didn't see him there. So we're driving around, couldn't find him, get back to the truck. We see, and I, I look inside that about an inch um, of a crack um, in, the, in, in, in the window. And I see a, a small pup laying down in the back seat. And I was just thinking to myself, this, this is no way for, for a veteran or a, or, or a pup to be living. And March over to the store, I buy, I purchase something in the ballpark of, I don't know, 12 to 15 gallons of water and a 20 pound bag of dog food and, and various other snacks. And I drive it back to his truck and he's nowhere to be found. So we drive around for two hours looking for this guy. And we start asking the people in the community, hey, um, he, he camps out here. Where is he? Where would he, where would he be spending his time today? So we drive around for about two hours looking for this guy and we're like, you know what? I'm just going to leave. I'm going to leave all the supplies that I have in my truck. I'm going to leave in the back of his truck and just leave a little note. And I, I'm, I'm truly, I, I, I know, I know I got to answer my prayers and he showed up, he showed up and I popped my trunk. I said, I don't know you. 
I am here to help. The hardships of being homeless are, are, are difficult. And I, I don't know what it's like. And I'm, and I'm blessed to have a, have a home. But let me help make your day a little easier. So I got to know him. Served in the United States Air Force and his dog. Uh, his dog, his name, the dog's name was so cool, Rambo. And <laughs> I got to know Rambo and I got to know the veteran and, and really understand what his needs are. And it's clean water and dog food. Truth be told, he tells me, Justin, I said, what do you need? He's like, just food. I need, I need food. And I said, well, here it is. Hopefully this lasts you a couple of weeks, but quite a bit. And he goes, I will always feed my dog before I feed myself. And that there was a fire that was ignited within me. I said, you know what? I need something more. I need something bigger and better than just my truck. I need more space. I, 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 I need to help more homeless veterans. That was the fire that ignited the Homeless Vets and Pets campaign. And uh, just several weeks later, I went and purchased a 1968 M101A1 military trailer for the sole purpose of stacking it um, with clean water and dog food. That is the mission because we are going to be going street side, curbside to, to deliver the resources that they need because I don't ever want to hear that again. I, I don't want to know that they are sacrificing their own, their own meal for the day for their dog. And, and we know a lot of, a lot of our, our homeless heroes do have pets. They, they mm -hmm. become certain dogs. They become their best friends. They've become uh, that, that companion that, is, that will listen always. Right. And, and I said, you know what? This is the mission. We are going to add, add this to our social impact program. The um, mental health 22 mile challenge and in our homeless vets and pets campaign. So I am working exclusively. Oh gosh. I, let me share the names with you. I am working exclusively with uh, several businesses and nonprofits to help um, join us in this, in this objective to feed our homeless heroes. But I do want to say, and allow me to say for the record, we are going to be serving everybody that is homeless. You don't have to be a, a veteran for us to help you. Everybody mm -hmm. deserves deserves uh, clean water. And if they have a, a dog, they need dog food too. Um, so we're going to be helping everybody. It's not just not just our those that we call veterans or 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 anybody else. I, it just it, it's inclusive of everybody. We want to, we're going to serve everybody that we see. So I want to tell you, oh, Scott, yeah. Scott, I do want to yeah, tell you really, um, I'm working with, I'm partnered with some very important organizations um, who are doing phenomenal things um, here in Southern California, as well as across the country. Um, allow me to state for the record, uh, Front Site Military Outreach. Um, and these, these are a list of our partners, uh, Rucking to Remember, uh, Brotherhood Bridge Foundation, Working Dogs for Warriors, um, American Savage, Save Our Six, Vigilant Hubble, Rescue Brewery Company, SRVS, um, Nature Select in Inland Empire. They donated a bag of dog food, uh, you know, for, for this campaign to help kickstart it. Uh, Mission 22, the VA in West Los Angeles, Monrovia Fire Department, uh, various law enforcement stations and local city officials are all hopping on board to help us give and serve. Time was served and it's now time to honor Mm -hmm. And that's, that's our mission. Awesome. And so your, I mean, ultimate goal, I mean, with a lot of this stuff, um, you know, a lot of the suicide awareness uh, programs, um, you know, looking at reducing the number the, the that 22 a day, obviously, we'd all want it to be zero a, a day. But, um, you know, it, baby steps here we can't can't run before we uh we can crawl and walk so yeah. let's reduce that number uh, what are some of the steps that that you think that that might be able to help reduce that 22 uh a day um geared towards the the veteran community um you know to to try to reduce the, the number of veteran suicides but but also um you know, there, there's other people involved too. You know, there might be things that family members or, uh, you know, friends, a community can do to help, uh, you know, in reducing this number. And maybe they just don't realize that there are steps that they can be taking. So do, do you have any ad, ad, 
thoughts or advice on that? Absolutely. So let me share with you as a, as a healthcare professional, um, uh, working in, in a very complex dynamic environment um, right now with COVID-19, um, I, I, I saw the struggles uh, that our doctors, nurses, and support staff were facing. And, and I, I said, you know, I, I said to myself, just while well, sitting in, an off, in the office one day, I said, we, we need to talk, we need to talk about this. So I started bringing it up um, in conversation with administration to say, hey, what, what, what can we do to help them out to make their day a little easier? And, and what we're doing is now um, being inclusive with our, with our healthcare professionals to, to, to get them to come out and start talking about what they're going through and, and to, share, to, to share their, their daily struggles. Because I can, I can tell you what, uh, during, during these events, uh, we have people that are opening up in, in that dialogue to, to share what they're going through. I, I might not know, um, you know, as a certain aspect of, of, you know, let's just say depression, for example, but I'll tell you what, I have a good friend who, who is going through, let me connect you with him. And we've become that, that, that shoulder to lean on you know, not just for a day, but we've, we've established, um, lifelong friendships, you know, walking away from these events, people are now reaching out to one another to say, Hey, you know what? I, I need help. Um, you know, what, what words of encouragement can you share with me today? And I know people are picking up the phone and starting to call. So that there is, we're, we're finding, we're finding the, the power of friendships and the power of fellowship, the power of, of knowing somebody that you didn't know 20, 24 hours before that are marching, running alongside you with the same mission, the same objective of, of taking that number from 22 to zero. And you know, we have, what's important too is, I've, I've had this discussion with several of, of our partners. Um, we we want to talk about our spouses and, 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 and our youth, the dependents, because they're fighting just as much as, as, as those that are on the front lines and, and the battles that they go through too. So we've, we've seen the wives and the girlfriends, uh, you know, come together and, and, and find, um, um, you know, th th that commonality where, where they can, we, where they're now opening that conversation. Hey, you know what, this is what I, this is what I've gone through. You're going through it. Let me help you get through the next day. Let me, let me tell you about what I've done um, to get through that, the, you know, the, the daily challenges. So um, to answer your question, when you're looking to your left and your right and you're on a bike and, or on foot or you're walking, um, during these days, uh, that we put on these 22 mile challenges, um, there is really something to be said about knowing that you are not alone, that you are not alone because there's somebody there to walk alongside you, to pick you up when you are down. All right. And, and that's, that's one of the reasons that I started this podcast even, uh, you know, and, and there's a lot of other things that, that people are doing, but, um, to let people know that they're not alone is a huge, uh, a huge relief sometimes when you're struggling. Sometimes you get so, uh, so much tunnel vision and you're, you're just focused on this one problem and you can't see your, your way out. And then all of a sudden you might hear a story of someone else who went through something similar and you hear that they did find their way out and this is what they did. And this is how they, they got their, themselves out of it. And all of a sudden now there's a little spark of hope. And that's sort of the message I, I kind of want to share. And, and it sounds like that's similar to what you're saying there is that you're not alone. Um, and if you're, if you're able to get through this day, maybe, maybe you can get through, maybe tomorrow will be a little bit better and you can get through that next day too. Um, and, you know, get, get through these days, get, get through, you know, day after day and, and work on on getting getting better, get seeing the the brighter side of of things, um, and and if messages like this uh, you know offer a little bit of hope that there there's some hope out there for you, then then so be it, um, you know. But 
but keep fighting, I guess, is the ultimate uh, goal there, you know? And especially with our youth, too. Um, our youth are always watching. <laughs> yeah. always watching. They're very <laughs> observant. And we want to be that example for them. What We want to tell them and show them why we do what we do, because one day we're going to pass a baton to them and they are going to run with it. And, you know, um, we're, we're all unified in, in this goal to push for, um, you know, this public conversation that, we, that we're bringing to light and breaking down those stigmas and, and, and you know, and just the, the simple fact that people think it's taboo to talk about, you know, the, the daily struggles of depression and PTSD. Um, we we, we want to let people know that when, when they come, when they come out, that there's that there's a, a family that will sit and listen, you know that that we can look at them in the eyes truly and say, hey, you know what, we 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 want to know what what is really going on, because quite frankly, we we don't want anybody suffering from these invisible wounds that we don't see every day, uh, and it, and it's tough to know who's really going through it if, if they're not really coming out. I talked to uh, and which kind of segues into this next thing that I want to bring up, which is very important to me. Um, at this past run in, in February, I had the honor and privilege to have the mother of a Marine veteran um, come out and she, and this, this amazing woman, God bless her, she walked over 20, she walked 25 miles, Scott, can you believe that? <laughs> 25 miles. Uh, she, uh, I think there was some confusion with the trail and, and, <laughs> But you know what? It was I, from what I, I from what I gathered from her. At, I met her at the finish line. Um, she was it opened and exposed her to to the um, to um, the the homeless the, the plague of homelessness here in Southern California. And it's very unfortunate that we have so many so many of them sleeping along the shoreline here in Southern California and, and, and it opened up that conversation to what can we do to help? Um, but, but also we, we also discussed um, what she learned from it and what she learned from that event was, you know what? She, she may have lost, she may have lost her son, but she gained about 50 others, 50 other <laughs> sons and, 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 and daughters from that day because we were able to, to not only honor his name prior to the run, um, we looked at her and we told her, hey, you, you are not alone. We, we, we expect you to come, come back out and, and, and continue to um, you know, raise this public awareness of, of mental health. And um, we were also just motivated by, by her story and what she said was, you know, the sacrifice, what the pain that we felt for one day, the pain that we felt for one day, putting in those steps and in, in, in those pedals, uh, does not compare to the amount of pain that our veterans and first responders feel every day. And to put ourselves to empathize and, and feel a little bit of that um, really puts things in perspective. Um, I, I do have to acknowledge, let me share this with you. My friend, um, there, was two, there were two guys, uh, three actually, um, and uh, there's some of which while on the trail, Scott, the sight of, of the body breaking down, I mean, to the point where it just freezes in time because we're at mile 18, 19, and 20, when you're when you see somebody's body just completely freezing time lock up because it's to the point of it's beyond the point of exhaustion really it is it's unfathomable because the fact that they are willing to do what they do because they know somebody their brother served um, because their brothers have served or you know somebody in their family um, you know. Um, Gosh, uh, just it's really something because they're willing to put themselves through one of the hardest things for the day. Um, 
to acknowledge that service and sacrifice. And they kept going, Scott, they kept going. It is, it is truly inspirational. Um, when you can look at these guys and, and their, their, their body just completely broken down, but when it is broken down to that, on that level, there's really, there's peace that you can find within yourself to say, you know what, then that, that next step counts, that next step matters. Right. And powering your, 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 your brain and, and separating your, 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 your mind and your body from, from itself. And just, there's an objective, there's a mission and people are counting on us today to get that next step. And we're encouraging yeah. everybody to join us. Yeah. And, and I think more important than that, that next step is to not quit. Um, and I, it, it really becomes mind over matter. Um, and I, I know from my own personal experiences doing, you know, some of the stuff in the army that we, we had to do some of the, the long ruck marches and the, the, you know, days on end without, uh, you know, coming back to, uh, you know, a bed that we can sleep in or anything like that. You know, we're, we're sleeping out in the woods or we're sleeping out in the, you know, wherever it was that we were, um, you know, the, the cold, the rain, the heat, the, you know, everything that we, we dealt with, um, it's just a matter of just not quitting. Um, and, and I think the, the segue there, uh, or the not segue, the takeaway there, uh, from that is apply that to life. You know, there's a lot of hard things that we do in life. You know, if we're, if you're struggling with, uh, you know, mental health issues, depression, anxiety, you know, whatever, just don't quit, like keep fighting at it. And, you'll get through at, at some point you'll get through. Um, I know for me, a lot of times I didn't want to take another step. I, I, I my body was breaking down and I, I didn't want to take another step, but I did. And I kept taking that next step and that next step and the next step. And eventually I came to the finish line or, or we, we ended at some point and, and the, there, there wasn't any more steps that needed to be taken. And the pack fell off my shoulders and, my body felt so much better because it was that much lighter and I was able to finally get a shower. I was finally able to get some warm food and, you know, stuff like that. And me and things got better. And I think that's kind of the takeaway is that, yeah, maybe you're struggling through something right now. Um, but that struggle is going to be over at some point and it will get better as long as you keep taking that next step. And yeah, you know what? I and I, I agree with that. Um, I can guarantee you, if you come out for one of these days, uh, for one of these events, it will change your life. You can't say that it will not work if you've never given it a try. Right. We are encouraging our friends and our families to come forward to come give it a try because I can tell you what, you will meet uh, some exceptional. Uh, people that are just that have that are on these godly missions too um and, and these nonprofits that we're partnering with and bringing their communities forward so what we're looking at is truly a unified front because we're all offering we all offer different levels of um support for for mental health and we're all sort of looking at this as as a piece to a pie uh we have um, it, it, gosh, Scott, it, we are, we're all working together, um, in solidarity to, to offer solution, different solutions that we all can bring to the table. Right. So now I, I know you had a few, uh, dates coming up of events that you had, uh, lined up, um, that are, are coming out. I know that this we're recording this uh, a few weeks before this this episode is actually going to come out. But um, uh, are there any dates that you wanted to share with uh, the audience who might be located in the Southern California area who might be able to, you know, come out and support uh, your organization and, the, and these events? Yes. So I have um, Ota Country uh, officially partnered with Rucking to Remember. Um, the founder and president will be flying out from his home state and 
uh, coming here to Southern Sunny California uh, the first weekend of April, and he will be coming out to um, get his steps in. And what I mean by that is we have a 22-mile challenge coming up the first weekend of April. Um, and beyond that, uh, which is truly going to be an unforgettable experience. So anybody is welcome to come join us. Uh, Oath to Country Foundation will certainly have uh, front site military outreach, working dogs for warriors, and um, friends and families come out to that. But we also have, we're looking forward to, and in the planning um, stages for a Memorial Day weekend 22-mile um, challenge. Um, that will look a little different next time because we are including our youth. We want to set up a little course for our kids and as well as our spouses and honestly, our older veterans too. Um, you know, there's a couple couple guys that I, I want to see out there on bikes that um, that would love to participate. So I'm, I'm trying to partner with bike co electric bike companies um, or just even bike shops that are willing to help us um, acquire some electric bikes so we can get our, our older veterans out there too. And I'm thinking of one guy in particular, uh, my best friend, um, Sandy Sanchez, who's my chief financial officer, 33 years of service in the Navy, went on to work at the Pentagon um, after his service and um, Vietnam veteran. And I, I, want, I want to see him out there with us. And he supports from the sideline with the flag. And I, I, I you know, I, I look at him and I say, Sandy, you're just, you are the salt of the earth and truly such an, an honorable man and there's others like him out there that we want to bring forward to um to participate and have boots on the ground with us in solidarity um, um so it's it's really something special so yeah memorial day weekend and looking looking forward um to um i will be announcing on social media the um street side outreach uh, for our um homeless vets and pets campaign. So I'll, I'll be announcing to the public um, the days that, we, which I don't have on the calendar yet, but days that we'll, we will be going curbside. <clears throat> um, I'll give you a good example. We have here in Los Angeles, uh, Veterans Row. If you're familiar with the term Skid Row here in Los Angeles, we have, it's very unfortunate, we have homeless encampments that, are, that consist of our veterans. So we're going right to them. And um, I will be announcing that on social media when we, when we will be going to them. I, I actually recently had the privilege to partner with uh, the Veterans uh, Administration West Los Angeles campus um, in their homeless outreach program that they have. Uh, we became a stakeholder, otherwise as a partner, um, to provide them with the resources and needs that they know um, our homeless veterans need, such as sleeping bags, uh, socks, um, all the way to tents and chairs with awnings. Um, so th th this is all information I will be sharing on our social media platforms for, for people to help donate um, to Oath to Country Foundation. Um, um, I, I do wanna bring up uh, an event that I, I didn't bring up previously. On January 30th, 2021, Stars and Stripes Barbecue and Oath to Country Foundation partnered um, together to host our first annual mental health awareness fundraiser. 100% of those proceeds from, from that barbecue, uh, which totaled out to be $3,545 that we raised in four hours from 12 to 4 p.m., um, 100% of those proceeds are going to the purchase of the resources and items that our homeless heroes need. So um, Eddie, Eddie Hernandez is the, um, it's a veteran owned um, operation and he is a proud board member of Oath to Country Foundation. And uh, we're working together to um, quite frankly host more barbecues so we can raise as much money as we can to help our homeless veterans. Yeah, that, that's, that's great. And, um, you know, and, and everyone's got to eat, right? So you might as well come out, have some good food, uh, you mm -hmm. know, raise some money for, for veterans and, and help out along the way. So, um, so that's great. So you, you mentioned uh, briefly that you're going to share a bunch of this uh, information on, on social media, uh, probably, you know, some, some information's available on your website. Um, 
Would you mind sharing where people can go to get in touch with you and uh, find out more about all, all the upcoming events and more about uh, the Oath to Country Foundation and how to donate or if they're not in your area to, to physically come out and, and help if they're, they're willing to donate, uh, you know, what, what they, they can uh, do there? Yes, absolutely. Um, you, can, you can go to www.oathtocountryfoundation.org. Um, you can, you can, there's a, a, a donation um, button that you can click and donate a dollar or even 50 cents. Uh, anything will go a long way. And um, you can also check out Instagram out to country foundation. I, I check Scott, honestly, I check every single message that, that hits my inbox. Um, so, so there's no message that will go unseen. You can, um, we have an Amazon uh, smile, uh, account set up where you can go on Amazon Smile and purchase um, a list of items that I have selected for the Homeless Vets and Pets campaign, uh, such as sleeping bags and buckets and Ziploc bags and collapsible dog bowls, uh, things of that nature. Uh, you can see the extensive list there. Uh, you can check us out on Facebook as well, or to Country Foundation. Um, so I will see everything. If you message me, asking how you want to get involved or, or you know, you want to make a, a donation. I, I will personally, not only will I message you back, but I will ask you for your phone number so I can call you and thank you. It's that That's personal awesome. to me. I really, I really, I really, I really make it a point to make it personal because I want people to know that this is, we're here for the long haul and, mm -hmm. and we're going to, we're going to find these solutions with our partners and we're, we're, we're going to make a difference and we're going to, we're going to leave this place better than how we found it. And, 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 and I know, I know that these, these are, these are sizable challenges that we are facing. And, but, but I, what I want people to know is that there is no mountain too high or, um, or any challenge too difficult, um, before us because we're 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 ready to step up to the plate and we're ready we're ready to go we're ready to go hard and and it's it's we are we are a relentless few and we only hope that we continue to grow our our team um we are we are one team one fight and, and i and i cannot stress that enough um there are other exceptional organizations out there and individuals um raising the awareness too we're all together in this um, as, as one team, one fight. And, and I can't, I, I, or we, we cannot do this without them. Um, quite frankly, it would be lonely. It wouldn't be fun. Right. And I mean, how far would we go if it were just myself? And so, you know, we, we've summoned the, the help and support of, of those partners, uh, organizations and business, businesses so that we can, we can have a significant impact not just here in Southern California, but I'm talking nationwide. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we're, we're only a couple minutes in. If, if you look back, the first run was August 8th and we're here, you know, February 20, you know, 27th. You know, we're only a couple months in and we've really, uh, we've, we've woken the sleeping giant, Scott. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Well, your your passion uh, for this uh, is is very evident, uh, you know, just, just in the, this, uh, you know, short amount of time talking to you, um, you know, I, I can clearly see that you have a, a fire and a passion. So I have no doubt that you're not going anywhere anytime soon with, with any of this. So, um, you know, I, I definitely, uh, you know, hats off to you with that and, and everything that you do. Um, but it, it's, it's really been, uh, you know, a pleasure speaking with you to, to find out more about, uh, you know, kind of what you're doing and, and, and everything. And I, I, I think that the, the passion, uh, the passion is definitely there. And, and I think that that's an important aspect of all of this, uh, to, to keep you motivated and keep you going, uh, you know, especially when times get tough because they inevitably will, they do for, you know, any foundation, any organization, they, they, times do get tough and they get hard and, um, but that passion can take you over that hump. So, um, uh, definitely hats off to you. And, and, uh, um, before we wrap up, I, I just wanted to, uh, just ask if there's any kind of closing thoughts or any other, uh, things that you had before, uh, before we wrapped up here. Yes, I, I did. I, I did forget to mention one of the biggest events of the year 
And I want everybody to put it on their calendar right now. Go into your phone, open up your calendar, and put in the month of August, Working Dogs for Warriors, um, Front Site Military Outreach, and Oath to Country Foundation are going to be putting on the first ever uh, annual mental health uh, awareness event in the city of Fontana. And this is truly going to be something special. We've never seen this done before. Um, quite frankly, we want to roll this out um, in, in other cities in, in working with city officials to allow us to come into their cities and, and host these events where we have um, trained mental health professionals, where we have motivational speakers, where we have anywhere from, from our veterans and first responders. We will see people from all walks of life come together for this event. And we're looking at a date of August 21st, 2021. So um, more details to come on that front on my social media platforms. I will be uh, discussing that in detail with everybody. So there's that last um, um, uh, important uh, update that I want to share with, with everybody listening. And um, there's, there's more runs to come. Um, I will be hosting donation drives in, in various cities um, with that 1968 military trailer that I purchased and um, where I, I will ask people to come forward to donate sleeping bags and the goods that we need um, to, to go street side. So um, any, anything else um, you have to share, Scott? No, so I, 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 think, I think that that just about does it on, on my end here. And I think um, it's important for everyone to, uh, especially if in the Southern California area, uh, follow Oath the Country Foundation on Instagram and Facebook. Check out their website. Uh, I saw on your website, you have an e email uh, newsletter sign up thing too. Uh, so sign up for their newsletter. So you can be kept in the loop if you're if you're willing to participate in any of these events or you want to donate or time or resources whatever you have uh, available um I'm, I'm sure all of that would be appreciated by them um so follow them on social media get on their newsletter uh check out their website all that stuff uh and and help out where you can um and and help out help out veterans along the way so um you know with that uh, thank you again for uh, sharing your story and your journey uh, to where you're at now. Um, it really has been a pleasure speaking with you today and, and hearing your, your passion come out uh, in, in this, in this, uh, this episode. Yeah, Scott, uh, thank you for your time as well as your service to this country. Um, I am grateful thank for you. that. And as I mentioned, I, I will be, we will be honoring your, your brother before our next run. And I just want everybody to know that um that our organization is a place where we can come laugh, cry, and heal to honor the past and embrace the future that we are working toward. Um, so come be a part of our team, our family. We are open arms um, and, and, and welcoming of everybody that wants to come help make a difference in the lives of, of our veterans and first responders. So come help us make a difference and um, we have a long road ahead, but um, we're, we're in it for the long haul. Scott, thank you. I wanna thank God for this opportunity for, for allowing me to go before you in our community, um, country, and, and I, I'm sure people across the world listen and tune into your podcast. So I'm grateful for, for you, for God, my grandfather, and, and again, Cliff, for connecting me with Decisive Aim. Um, thank you. you. This is truly an unforgettable experience, and I will never forget this. And, and I only hope that you and I can have another podcast, um, sit down um, maybe a, a year from now to share um, you know, more updates with you because it, things will continue to come forward as, as we grow. I'm, I'm sure it will be more updates and, you know, with the, the fire and passion and, and more things will, will come up and I'm, I'm sure there'll be some stuff to talk about uh, in the, in the future too. So we'll have to have you back on. All right. All right. Thanks again. Thank you, Scott. Thanks for listening to the drive on podcast. If you want to check out more episodes or learn more about the show, you can visit our website, driveonpodcast.com, or on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at driveonpodcast. 